My name is Rich Harrington, and welcome to another edition of Photoshop for Video. Today, we're going to look at a nice workflow enhancement that's part of Photoshop CS3, and that's the Refine Edge command. You can use this command to enhance your selections, which leads to better composites and better color correction. Let's see how. Now, I've opened up a really basic image here, and we'll just try this out on the simple image before going to something more complex. What I want to do here is select just the bird. Now, we could do this a variety of ways, but I'm going to take advantage of calculations. So let's try image calculations, and we'll combine the red and the blue channel together to create a new channel. I'm going to go ahead and invert that channel, and what I'm trying to do here is find a combination of mixing these two modes together where the bird stands out very clearly from the background. And this could be a little bit tricky, so sometimes it's a little bit of trial and error. But eventually, as you try out different combinations, you'll usually find something that pops reasonably well. So, with the calculations command, I ended up combining the red and the green channels together with vivid light mode and invert. Usually it's a bit of trial and error, and what that'll do is create a new channel. Once you've got that new channel, you could play with it. And we'll usually push the blacks so they go nice and clean, and then pull the whites in so the areas that are gray become nice and clean white. And that's done a pretty good job there. Let's just play with that a little bit, get rid of some of that noise. And there you go, we've got a nice, decent selection. I can go ahead and command click to load it, and you see the bird is selected. And now we can go ahead and throw that away. We just use the calculations command to make an initial selection, and we'll now take advantage of the refine edge command. Now, in order to use the refine edge command, you can make a selection using any tool. And then once you have that, you could choose select refine edge. Let's go up to the menu here. There it is and you'll see the dialog box comes up. You want to be sure the preview box is checked because that's very useful. And you might need to reset this by option clicking there. You could choose to view it over the background image in a quick mask like view, on black, on white, or as a black and white file. You may toggle between these different views to make it easier to see. Fortunately, you could use your Command Plus to zoom in as you're working here, and that makes it easier to clean up. Notice we definitely have a blue fringe, so I want to remove that. If you click on Description here, you get an idea of what's happening. So let's adjust the radius first. We can use this to improve any areas with soft transitions. So as we crank that over, you'll see how it makes a subtle change. To get rid of some artifacting here, we'll use contrast, and that'll actually tighten that up a little bit. We're doing pretty good, but we definitely have some fringe there. Let's smooth this out a few more pixels and feather it just a tad, creating a gentle transition. We could then contract this to a negative number, and notice how it eats into the image. Don't go too far, but it's just about there. Now that's worked really well. We have just a little bit of spotting there, but that's easy to get rid of. I'll go ahead and click OK, press Q for quick mask and grab my paintbrush, and simply paint with white here to make sure that none of those spotting is getting picked up. Q will exit the quick mask mode. We've got a great selection there, and we could store that. Double click so this is a layer, and add the layer mask. There we go, we've extracted the bird successfully. If you need to, you could tweak the mask too. Just click on it and do Command or Control L for levels, and now you could pull the middle slider. And notice how we could eat away at the mask by contracting or expand it as needed to deal with any fringe. I'll pull that in just a little bit, and that seems to do what's necessary there. Gets rid of the fringe. Notice we've got a nice clean edge there on the white with no blue halo. To make the great alpha channel on this, let's build on what we covered last week. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this layer, and let's simply run the alpha channel action. We'll go ahead here, we only need one copy, and we'll say alpha channel from visible layer. Continue. If I look at the channels palette, you'll see we do indeed have an alpha channel. Now, to avoid any fringe, we need to put a copy of the photo back there. 
That's where that duplicate copy comes in handy. You could turn it back on and simply shift click on the thumbnail for the mask and the layer mask goes away. Now you might be saying, I did all that work to extract it. Why did you get rid of the mask? Well, the alpha channel is what's going to cause the transparency when you send this to a video or motion graphics application. It doesn't matter that the whole picture is there. If you look at the channels palette and you turn the alpha channel on, you'll see that it is indeed going to mask it. The benefit here of putting that photo back there is you will get a nice, clean, straight alpha channel that won't have any white pre-multiplied into its edges. If you missed last week's show, be sure to visit photoshopforvideo.com and check out that episode so you understand the difference between a straight or a pre-multiplied alpha channel. At this point, it's a simple save job. My favorite format to save is a TIFF file. If we save this as a TIFF file, it'll import as a flattened graphic into Premiere, Final Cut, Avid, After Effects, you name it. But when we open it in Photoshop, we have layers. So simply choose File, Save As, and specify that you want to save this as a TIFF file, check the Alpha Channels box, check the Layers box, and click Save. Now, in the next dialog box, it's very important. If you don't need it, don't apply compression because it'll just get in the way. Pixel order is fine and specify the byte order for the system you're working on. Do not check save transparency. If this box is visible, it will interfere with your alpha channel. So ignore that box. And then you could go ahead and save faster saves, bigger files. Click OK and it will save a layered TIFF file with the transparency embedded in it. And it's as simple as that. You can now bring this file into a document and work with it with embedded transparency. Now, be sure to tune in next week. We'll revisit the Refine Edges command one more time for a more complex image and really learn how this is useful for better selections. For Photoshop for Video, I'm Rich Harrington, and be sure to check out our resource blog at photoshopforvideo.com.